Welcome everybody um, to this first Server Academy of 2021 and the first online Server Academy ever. Um, I think we've got quite a lot of attendance, attendees. Um, I think the registered number is up to 70. Um, so there's going to be quite a, it's going to be quite an interesting one to manage. But let me start off by first of all just introducing myself and the program then we'll talk a bit about the modality so first of all who am i my name is bob um i'll be presenting the sessions for the next two days um i know quite a lot of you on here already but for those who don't know me my, i work for the university of oslo and, Various roles, I suppose, um, primarily interested in strengthening country server implementations and issues around security and interoperability. Um, I guess I also end up being sort of chief troubleshooter when people's people get into performance issues or other problems on their servers. Um, I'm always reluctant to call myself any kind of expert or certainly not the expert we've got a lot of people in this group who who i know are, are um, very competent in various aspects of server administration and other things um, there's a few notable folk i'd ask you to look out for on the slack um stephen okaya from his uganda uh, clement dajo from his western central africa Morton, one of the lead developers in Oslo, Jaime, who's one of the main Android developers, Barnabas from HISP Nigeria, and Tuzo from HISP Tanzania, and, and others. I, I just noted a, a few of the names coming in as I, as, as I came in. So we've got a lot of participants, um, and that raises some challenges of course but i think also it's a it's a, a opportunity to grasp because um we can take advantage of the various skills that we have on on here and during the course of the program i hope that people will be able to help each other out uh, as much as possible rather than sending direct messages to me all of the time um <laughs> So yeah, as I said, this is the first time we've ever tried to do this. Um, it's a bit of a challenge. We've never done it before. Well, I've certainly never done it before. So um, you'll have to bear with us as we as we make a few mistakes here and there. As I said, a lot of participants. Usually, we do this academy over a period of four or five days in a particular location, around about twenty people. It's kind of very intense. Um, um, we usually provide people with a virtual server to work on during that. Um, and we have a lot of interaction after hours and things like that. This is going to be quite different, right? We've got more numbers. Um, I know, even though we've tried to make clear that this is not a beginner's introduction to Linux course, it's really... A training for people who are already experienced with Linux, preferably already managing their DHIS2 servers to introduce them to, to um, so maybe some additional ideas, perhaps up the skills, things like that. Um, yeah, so we decided that the primary means of communication that we're going to use is is slack and i think alice or martin should have added you to the to the slack um as part of your registration process this is what we plan to do okay the the full program um we've decided to stretch it out over four weeks but that doesn't mean we got zoom calls every day we're going to have today and tomorrow um, a bit of orientation that's what this is um a couple of presentations and and a lot of a lot of demonstration um and over the next two weeks then that'll be your opportunity then 
to practice yourselves on your own virtual server. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, your opportunity to go through the material and um, practice yourself. Then we'll have another Zoom call uh, in two weeks' time uh, where we have the opportunity, if possible, to cover a couple more topics. And we also have an opportunity to catch up with where people are with a practical work. Then we'll take a break again for another two weeks um, where, again, um, you can be involved in, in practical work. What we usually do with the face-to-face -face academy is we, we suggest a few topics for, for small projects which are aimed at kind of different skill levels. People can self-select to have a go at, at um, doing some slightly more extended practical work. So we'll do that, I think, in the, in the following two weeks. And then we have an opportunity again for a final the final Zoom half day, where um, if you'll notice on the program, I've actually left out the topics to be to be discussed in the first two sessions of that day. We can decide ourselves as a group over the next couple of weeks which topics people want to go into more depth in um, or to explore further or things maybe we didn't cover sufficiently or ran out of time uh, and we can fit in there. Um, so that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to have a little bit of this as kind of synchronous presentation webinar kind of thing. Um, but I think most of the actual work is going to be done in the in the time in between. So during that time, hopefully people will be able to discuss, raise questions, raise issues, etc. over the Slack. Uh, have I talked a bit about the Slack? Um, okay, I'll talk a bit about the Slack on the next slide. But first of all, the server. I can see, and Stephen raised with me this morning already, there's already been a, a rush of questions about, about the server. What do you need to be able to, to do this? So what I've laid out here um and we might be able to change this a little bit but in order to complete the exercise in the same way that i'm i'm going to run through them myself you need to have some a blank server that means with no additional software installed other than ubuntu 2004 lts um Ideally, you want four gigabytes of RAM more if you want to play around with, with running multiple instances. Eight gig is probably more comfortable. Uh, it's not so, it won't be sufficient to just run this on your laptop, right? You need to have a public IP address. The reason for that is twofold. Um, firstly, that you're going to be able to set up SSL certificates on your, on your server. Now, to set up SSL or TLS, you need to you need to have a public IP address and you also need to have a domain name mapped to it. Um, so that's a little bit of infrastructure setup that you're going to need to do. Um, the other reason for putting it online is that it also gives us an opportunity to be able to check what you've done. So once you have your server up and running, it's possible for me or others to go in and, and, and have a look at it. Um, <clears throat> how do you get yourself online well it depends i mean <clears throat> some of you may be working in environments already where you're able to to um, put yourself up a virtual machine um, the easiest way is probably to go is to use a, a cloud provider of some sort and many of them probably most of them now because they're all competing with one another will provide you some free starter credit to get going um, so I know, for example, Linode, um, if you sign up for an account on Linode, they'll give you $100 free startup credit. And to run a four gigabyte RAM server on Linode will cost you $20 a month. So that would, that would basically get you going. I know Google also offers free credit. I think, I think, um, Digital Ocean, others. Stephen is the expert on the cheapest possible servers. 
Contabo, I know, is a favorite of Stephen Okaya. SSD nodes, I think, is even cheaper. Uh, my personal favorite and one I always recommend, I guess, is, is Linode. Um, partly because I think it's it's very reasonable cost per performance. Also, we have a good we have good contact, uh, Linode executive fellow by the name of Fred Weston, who um, has an interest in the in, in in the project and generally is available to help people out when they get stuck. Um, so, yeah, I would suggest if you haven't got yourself a, a cloud provider of choice, then have a go at the getting started, make yourself an account on Linode, and you can get yourself a, a free Linode for a couple of months to work with. Um, that's also the, the environment which I'm going to be working with with the demo. Having said that, pretty much any other any other cloud provider will do. Um, it is theoretically possible to, to run it offline, um, but there's quite a few changes I would need to make to the setup scripts to make that work. Uh, partly because we've tried to create a setup of installation scripts which which are kind of secure by default so to make it easy for people to set up uh, HTTPS um, on their server and to make it difficult not to um, that was a deliberate design decision before it was before it was quite difficult to 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 set up the HTTPS and and there were a lot of servers out there who were just running unencrypted on the web um, fortunately, nowadays, I think there's far fewer, pretty much most of the servers I come across, people have got them configured securely or reasonably securely. Um, there's still a few um, that you can find, but you're not running HTTPS. So there is a channel in the Slack. I mean, I'm going to have a look at some of the Slack channels in a minute. There is a channel in the Slack which we have dedicated to to um questions and information and what have you around server setup so i'm going to suggest that if people struggle with that that they raise issues in that channel um and so we can all work through it together don't panic in the sense that if you don't have your virtual server up and running now um you still have two weeks to complete your assignment so um, obviously the sooner you get it up and running the better but if it takes a couple of days to sort things out then you still should be able to complete um, the dns record is is something again we're kind of hoping that most participants on here are, are have some linux networking experience i hope you know how to create yourself a dns record um, you need to have access to some domain in order to be able to do that. Again, if there are questions and difficulties around that, I think we should talk about them on the on the Slack channel. Um, which comes to the next point on here. The other thing you need beside your virtual server is your account on Slack. I think Alice or Martin should already have set everybody up. I think that was part of the registration process. And what we're going to try to do is to keep all of the discussion and links to material and things like that on the Slack. Um, and for that reason, I think Martin has even disabled the Zoom chat um, so that when we do chat, we try to keep all the discussion on Slack. That makes it easier to, to look back on, to have extended discussions, which last longer than a Zoom session things like that. Um, the other thing that you need, will need is some kind of, kind of SSH client on your computer, uh, preferably open SSH. I know a lot of Windows users are fond of something like PuTTY for SSH. Um, set up with PuTTY, there's certain things with PuTTY which are a little bit tricky to do. 
Um, I think if, if you can run OpenSSH on your on your computer as a client, it'll be a little bit easier to follow what I'm doing because I'm also going to be using OpenSSH. There are various ways on Windows to, to do that. You can either, probably the easiest thing is to run a Linux virtual machine on Windows and use that as your, as your client. You also need to have a pair of SSH keys, a public key and a private key so that you can set up access to your server using keys. Let me just break from the slides a little bit and look at Slack. This is the Slack environment that's been set up for us. Okay. Um, and Slack has a number of channels, and we see we created one here called Cloud Service. Um, I would ask if people have particular questions, queries, problems, if they get stuck or suggestions or what have you related to the whole business of getting their server up and running. Um, put all those questions and discussion in here, in this particular channel. Now, I'm told just because of the way that this Slack thing works, that people don't necessarily see aren't automatically joined to these channels they they will have to actually um browse and join join the the channels so how to join a channel i think let's just see has alice done this uh bomb map shoot something in yeah please do yes uh, above the channels you see there's something called more channels the three dots above the channel list on the left side. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you click on that more channels, a bit, uh, yeah, you should be able to see the list of the whole channels. Okay, I think I'm seeing the list of the whole channels already. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but channel maybe, browser. Yeah. Channel yeah, browser, go, yes. You go so with each channel of you browser. Course, each of you in the course can also navigate here and manually join any channel that you missed so far. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Martin. Hopefully everybody got that. So when you go onto the, if you go to the chat and you don't see all these same channels that I'm seeing, go there to the three dots on more, and then you can find the different channels. The, so we have this one, which we should find, particularly if you're having issues with your cloud server. Then for each of the presentations or sessions, um, I've decided to make a separate channel for each one. So this morning, besides this, little overview I'm going to be talking a bit about overall architecture um, and so questions about this morning's presentation ongoing discussion etc link to the, the, the slides are put into this particular channel afterwards this morning we're going to be talking about LXD so again we made a separate channel for that and then afterwards this morning we're going to talk about the installation so this is the this is the pattern we're going to try to follow um, see how well it works we know by the end of the day if it's a disaster or not we may have to change our approach but you can see quite a lot of people are sending have sent me direct messages already um, please bear in mind that there's, there's quite a lot of people i'm probably not going to be able to answer all of my direct messages um, so yeah as much as possible make use of the, the the channels for discussion so i think the introduce yourself channel a lot of people have already already discovered and have started introducing themselves that's great i know quite a lot of you already quite a lot of you i don't i'm going to read through the introduce yourself channel this afternoon and get a better idea who's here 